little about resolution. Basically, the ability to distinguish two objects that are close together as actually being two objects. Uh, we talk about three categories, and the main ones we'll talk about are axial and lateral. And so let's just look at some examples here. When we have the modern ultrasound that's pulsed ultrasound, sends out little groups of waveforms, usually about three in a pulse, and that's called the pulse length. Well, half of the pulse length is uh, the resolution in the axis of the beam. So axial resolution, half the pulse length of this. Now, if you think about it, if the frequency is higher, those are going to be scrunched together, so it's going to be a shorter pulse length and better resolution. So uh, that's a useful thing to keep in mind. Uh, so higher frequencies do give us better axial resolution. Well, let's just take a practical example. I'm cheating a little bit here, but say we have a patient that comes in that's had some kind of foreign body embedded in the eye, and uh, you can literally just take a transducer, usually a high frequency one, have them close the eyelid. You don't have to put it on the exposed eye. Look through the closed eyelid, and this is just an example of a patient that really does have a foreign body compared to his other eye, which is normal. This is just the back of the lens of the eye here. Well, let's play with that a little bit. Let's say, okay, we've got an eye. Let's say we've got a couple of little foreign bodies, maybe little pieces of glass, and they're located this way, so they're going to be in the axis of the beam. Well, if we have a high enough frequency transducer, there are enough waveforms coming along to distinguish these independently. And so we would actually then be able to see them as independent little objects here. If we're using a lower frequency transducer, then they're caught in the trough here, and so the machine can't really tell. It can tell something's there, but it can't tell they're two or how big they are or how far they are apart, and so our display would basically be kind of a blurred blob. So again, high frequency, better resolution in the axis of the beam. Well, what if the uh, things, instead of being in the axis of the beam, are at right angles to the beam? Now what's going to be the limiting factor for seeing it? Well, it's the width of the beam. And so that's why we have the focus is important. If you have a focus that's narrow enough to pass between these so that you could look over and see this one and look over and see this one, then again we could display them as discrete objects. Whereas if they're in the part of the beam that's wide, again, what we would just see would be a blob. So that's the basic idea. Axial resolution depends pretty much on the frequency of the transducer. Lateral resolution depends pretty much on the focal properties of the transducer. Now, again, we can put an acoustic lens in front of a simple uh, transducer and get the focal zone at some point we want. But now, playing games electronically, this is our flat surface of a transducer here. If you look at the red, these represent delay lines. So we're delaying the firing of the transducers associated with these, and that is actually going to send a beam out in a different direction. It's not going to go straight out from the transducer. It's going to go out at an angle. And if we do the opposite, if we do the show the green delays here, we can send it in the other direction. So you can play all kinds of useful games, and one of them is if you make the delay patterns like this, you can actually get this focal effect. And because it's electronic, we can actually choose where we want to put that focus. Now, we can even have multiple focal zones, although the trade-off here is it slows the frame rate down because the computer's having to, to work harder. So again, if you look at our example of the bayonet artifact here, what I want you to look at is actually the dis little displayed hourglass figures over here on the side, and that shows where the focal zone is set for this examination. And this is about right. It should be the distance between these should be somewhere in the area that you're most interested in. Temporal resolution, well, that's just basically the frame rate. Uh, to maximize the frame rate, keep the depth setting to a minimum. If you're looking at something that's this deep in the body, you don't want your depth setting this deep because you're just wasting the computer's efforts. And the same thing is use only one dynamic focal zone if that'll do the job set to the area that you're really interested in instead of multiple ones because both of those things slow down the frame rate. 